Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. And if you find the analysis I do every week on the fundamentals and technical analysis regarding supply and demand, please like, subscribe and share. And just a quick reminder for those Trading 180 members, whether you're option A or option B, if you go down to the uh, main page and go to number 11, click on that, and it will take you to the weekly analysis where um, you get analysis on over 25 currency pairs. I think it's maybe around about 28, 29 pairs um, on the weekly analysis. And this is where I go through the full strategy every week for you guys, um, including daily and weekly supply zones, all of the uh, odds enhancers um, included as well. So I help you along not only with uh, learning the strategy, but applying it every week and break it down for you guys. So let's get back to the fundamentals before I get into the technicals and looking at the week ahead. Um, central banks in the US, UK and Japan and China will provide an update on monetary policy next week with markets anticipating a 25% rate cut from the Fed. So if we go to the Fed watch. CME market watch tool and um, this is pretty much the uh, probability of a rate cut as uh, indicated by the uh, larger financial institutions and speculators and they uh, pretty much predict um, a 80% um, cut um, or an ease of 0.25% and 20% think that it's going to be no change so uh, you know, uh, usually a rate cut should indicate a uh, a weaker dollar, but with all central banks looking to ease as well, the uh, European Central Bank this week, um, say this week, but last week announced a fresh uh, round of stimulus, um, which in, um, in in monetary policy terms is is way worse than a you know a simple 0.25 rate cut. They haven't got any bullets really in the chamber, so. Um, the uh, European Central Bank and the European economy is uh, in a much worse uh, situation than you know the US, regardless of what you think of uh, Donald Trump. So uh, the European Central Bank has uh, you know announced that they're trying to weaken their currency to achieve their two percent inflation target, as well as uh, support the economy, and also as well. This week, the Bank of Japan, you know, it says may hold fire. This is a Reuters article, may hold fire uh, despite ECB's loosening. So, um, again, they are talking about easing um, and depend, well, depending on um, what happens, it says uh, stable markets and resilient domestic demand could help the Bank of Japan withstand pressure to expand an already massive stimulus program when policy makers meet next week in the wake of the European Central Bank's policy. They all want a cheap currency regardless of what, you know, is uh, the narrative is out there. They want to achieve their uh, their targets and support the economy. And by doing that, they have to have a weak, uh, weaker currency, which boosts exports. So, um, and GDP. So, um, you know, weak currency is uh, favorable to central banks. And um, as traders, we just take advantage of that or try to take advantage of that. So um, with the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan um, all weakening their, uh, trying to uh, weaken their currencies, um, the Fed is just basically, uh, you know, joining in with the party. Whether it will have a major effect or not is uh, to be, um, you know, looked at on the chart. I don't think it will. Maybe short term wise, there may be obviously some short term weakness, but Think the the pound sorry the pound the uh, dollar is the um, the uh, the overall the strongest uh, currency of them all so far um, and we also have just quickly the UK and the, the pound and the pound is really being driven by um, 
uh, no deal Brexit sentiment, if you know what I mean. So the fact that if there is a no deal Brexit sentiment um, uh, or deal no, or no deal is taken off the table, then the pound potentially may rally. And that's also been happening this week that the uh, the chances of a no deal Brexit being taken off the table is has increased. So you're seeing the pound, um, you know, increase in value. So. Um, let's get into the uh, the charts this week and what we have I'm going to start off <clears throat> on the US dollar um, index and the US dollar index is uh, just a measure of the uh, dollar strength against uh, the major currencies like the euro the yen and the pound as well as the Australian dollar and uh, last week pretty much we came back down into this demand zone rallied a little bit but then um, even though there's been some decent news for the uh, for the dollar, uh, the dollar index, dollar overall, I think is anticipating obviously a rate cut, which could see some short term, um, you know, uh, negative sentiment affect the dollar. But that doesn't really matter if you're looking to buy the dollar because it just gives you an opportunity to buy at a cheaper price, right? You know, uh, so. Um, if you are looking to buy the dollar even now or if you're looking at um, you know prices kind of falling away down here into this fresher area of demand as this level has been touched several times so I don't really expect this to hold if you know prices weaken into the Fed announcement then um, you know all we do is look forward to the US dollar index as some confirmation that there is buying across uh, the board when it comes to the dollar now moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen last week uh we had um basically this uh, little pin bar doji candle and um i was saying last week that there is risk on coming into the market donald trump and uh, china had pretty much uh, agreed to kind of extend uh tariffs um, the the um, them impose him, him imposing tariffs on each other basically, and uh, there was a, a lot of risk on sentiment coming into the market, and the Japanese yen uh, doesn't really do well in a risk on environment. Um, as investors will look to um, make more of a return on their money, so the Japanese yen at the moment is in negative interest rates, meaning that it's going to cost you to put money in the bank. They want you to not keep their money in the bank. They want the the, the, the currency out there. Whereas even though the U.S. dollar are um, cutting rates, you're still getting 2.25 percent return at the moment. Um, before they you know potentially cut rates um, which is better than negative interest rates so in a risk on environment the dollar really is the uh, the currency to buy and you're seeing that you know this week and especially with there being less risk off and more risk on in the market which means now that that supply zone has gone you've got a nice demand zone right there so uh, one of two ways you can play this um, if you are looking at getting uh, uh, long on the dollar, you'd have to really kind of wait for a pullback and then a move um, up uh, from here. So some bullish price action on the daily or a lower time frame. If you're looking to buy the Japanese yen and you think the Japanese yen is an absolute bargain at these prices, um, then you're looking at daily demand zone right here. Um, and then you're looking at getting short because, and obviously how supply and demand works is we look for past supply. This is an indication that the uh, Japanese yen was an absolute bargain at this price. Prices fell away, yeah. So buyer, so basically buyers at this point in time were looking at buying the dollar, sorry, the uh, Japanese yen, um, in absolute mass selling. The, uh, the the US dollar and so the same thing may occur around here but it depends on fundamentals and sentiment as those are really the drivers of uh, price uh, or the main drivers of price as well as you know liquidity and stop hunting which is something that I don't get into in uh, these videos but uh, let's move on to the dollar yen sorry dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss last week came up into this supply zone here um, again sold off a little bit sold off a little bit um, but to me I think the Swiss franc is uh, probably the weaker out of the two again it does well in a risk off environment but in a risk on environment um, not so much we do have a new demand zone right here 
and uh, what I would probably do is look for prices to kind of come down to this area here, this 98 um, uh, two level to 98, the brown number as we have um, not only uh, demand, there's lots of demand in this area, you have uh, you know resistance, support, support, you know a bit of support in here as well. So I think if prices can come down here, that'd be a decent buy if you're looking to buy the US dollar. If you're looking to short the dollar and buy the Swiss franc, then I would probably wait for price to maybe, you know, come up to this area right here. If you're trying to get into a new trade, a fresher area of supply. Um, if you did get short in these areas here and here on the lower time frames, maybe made a little bit of profit on that, you know, decent. And uh, what I would say is if again, um, there is risk off comes into the market, then the Swiss franc will probably end up, you know, strengthening if this, you know, risk on continues. Um, I think overall the dollar should want to, um, you know, uh, you know, get a bit stronger, even in the face of, you know, rate cuts. Dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, at the moment last week, we did see prices come down into this demand zone, a nice demand zone with the confluence of some support, resistance, support as marked out last week. So some of you may have got involved in that. Um, if you did, well done to you guys. Um, so uh, where we're at now is there was really no um, no supply here for the uh, for the dollar CAD prices literally just went straight through that. Um, so now all we're looking at is either a pullback into this area here before looking at getting long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this up to that area, the 1.316 level. If you wanna be a buyer of the dollar, if you're looking to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar, then you're looking for prices to really kind of come up into, I would say anywhere around this higher zone, around this 1.136 and the fresher area, the 1.34 1 round number is probably the better area to look for some short trades. Um, New Zealand, New Zealand, US dollar. Um, so we did come up into a level of supply here. There was a few supply zones around this area here and here. Uh, so there was supply here, but then when prices started to trail off, um, we were looking at getting short in here. There was a nice um, stop hunt set up around here, which um, I posted in the Telegram group, um, which I think some of you may have taken advantage of, um, and uh, took it for a nice two to one type trade. Some of you may still be in this, but um, this was a nice uh, sell trade right here. Um, I don't expect really prices to go further down. They could do, they could not. We have no idea. But with the Fed potentially, um, you know, cutting rates, we could see basically a move up into the, this higher zone. This is maybe 65 round number before looking at some more sell trades, as I will be looking to potentially short the uh, the New Zealand dollar. Um, New Zealand dollar actually is doing quite well. It's not necessarily the best trade or the best pair to look for uh, um, shorts against the dollar, but um, if the setup presents itself, we just manage our risk um, and uh, potentially take the trade. Uh, the, U the New Zealand dollar are also looking to cut rates as well. They cut rates more than expected last time around, but we could see a bit of a rally as well, um, obviously into next week. Um, if you do wanna be a buyer of this currency pair, you're looking at basically a pullback into this demand zone here before looking at um, a long trade there for the New Zealand dollar and that from a technical perspective I do like this uh, this area um, but from a fundamental perspective um, I'm more inclined to buy the US dollar at opportunities looking at the British pound US dollar so uh, last week um, there wasn't really any kind of supply zone around here to try and look for short in opportunities. Um, there was a bit of a stop hunt opportunity here, um, uh, but 
pretty much uh, depending on your entry and exit you may have uh, got a decent amount of pips on the intraday um, but overall from a daily perspective what you've got is um, the pound really just rallying on uh, no deal brexit sentiment so that's created higher highs higher lows and uh, we know that higher highs and higher lows are reasons for you know uh, uh, demand obviously there was a lot more demand at this price for the pound than there was you know at this exchange rate um, uh, so uh, this creates obviously strong demand so if we do want to be a buyer of the pound to take advantage of potential pound sentiment what you're looking for is a pullback into this area right here uh, do you have a bit of confluence with yeah a little bit of confluence with regards to some support and resistance in that zone where you've got a bit of support there bit of resistance so if, tri if prices come down into this area you've got support and resistance traders looking at that area as well as supply and demand traders um, looking to get um, you know long in that area um, again depending on whether it's a bargain um, and if you're looking to get short at the moment pretty much anywhere now you've got the one two five round number um, round numbers are always uh, um, decent for uh, to look for some sort of reversal not to say that they will happen but um, again with the dollar sentiment potentially and the Fed cutting rates you uh, you may see prices start to drift higher before they start to maybe turn around at one of these uh, these points around here uh, euro dollar euro dollar so what's happened is and I'll go to a little bit of depth in in, in this as well is and I was, I was saying this to the, uh, the, the private members uh, group the telegram group coaching group was um, um, and I ended up getting short here last week and taking profit pretty much down here um, so you know to get into it was everyone was pretty much expecting um obviously the ecb to cut rates it wasn't i mean and, and introduce stimulus they not only did, did, did they go into negative interest rates they uh they uh introduced uh qe so um that was to be pretty much expected now if everyone wants to get short right what has to happen is you need enough liquid the market needs enough, enough liquidity to get short everybody can't get short everyone can't press sell there needs to be enough buy orders um in order to uh for everyone to you know to to get short and if there are not enough buy orders right around this area then what do you think is going to happen the the, the they, the market has to look for the liquidity and this goes into you know um, iceberg orders and stop hunting and things like that and uh, the way that banks uh, trade so um, I was saying that you know if the market starts to come up right it's really and it, just my opinion is that there are a lot of you know financial institutions that are um, are short in this market but they can't get short because everyone else is short so there's not enough um, liquidity for them to get short there's not enough buy orders so what happens is is you know the market starts to stop and take out the um, uh, uh, you know the other side zero sum game and then also it starts to draw in traders long who want to uh, get long on the euro who follow price action and if prices you know this massive you know nice engulfing candle and prices start to move up what do you think traders are doing they're pressing what buy and the, the financial institutions can actually take the other side of your trade so when you're buying they're doing what they have to sell in the face of buying right so um, uh, this for me, this whole area, and if prices you know continue to go higher, it's just for me, it's a it's a case of uh, the financial institutions are um, you know looking to um, uh, sell in the face of buying, and then prices should roll over. I can't really see. Um, uh, the euro really strengthening against the dollar at the moment at the moment and of course anything can happen in the markets you know it's just a probabilities game um, things may change in the you know with the euro and the economy and prices may start to uh, you know go higher and things could get worse for the US dollar you know so um, I could be wrong it's 50 50 but for now and the way that the uh, economic data is and uh, monetary policy and they just introduced stimulus um, 
I think any pullbacks into you know fresher areas of supply are great you know uh, buying opportunities for the dollar. I'm not necessarily interested in getting long on the euro. If you look at them economically, they think about it like this: the European Central Bank introduced stimulus for a reason, and it's not because you know the economy is uh, doing fantastic. Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, me personally, wouldn't necessarily be you know uh, interested in buying the euro from a uh, from a supply and demand perspective but if you are yeah and there's always uh, contrarians out there you know make your money how you make your money um you know it's basically you're looking for basic pullback into uh, and this would be actually this would be a uh, supply sorry demand zone right here demand yeah nice demand zone there so what you're looking for now is probably some sort of and oh and I clicked the wrong thing one sec there you've got a level here where you've got some support and resistance so you've got support support resistance bit of resistance here so if you are looking to be a buyer bit of a pullback and then looking for a long trade there if not you're probably looking at a bit of a pullback down into the lows right here yeah if you're looking to be a buyer of the euro if you think the euro is an absolute bargain at these exchange rates then you know definitely you know you can wait for a pullback if you think that the uh, US dollar would be a bargain then um, you're looking at probably anything right now or if prices do come up this week yeah then you're looking at these areas here for some short trades um moving on to the euro yen and euro yen uh last week you know did get a bit of a sell-off and again um you've got the euro rallying a little bit again i don't think not for any kind of uh you know uh reason other than probably just some sort of liquidity but also with the yen the uh uh, it has been risk on as well so or more or less risk off so the yen doesn't do well in that kind of environment so uh, this is what you know has occurred and uh, we are up into the higher end of this um, supply zone so if risk off starts to come into the market then you've got the Japanese yen will probably end up strengthening and this is this is a nice zone I do like this zone technically but um, just whether you want to buy the Japanese yen also as well they've got their uh, central bank announcement and if they do you know add more stimulus and Q, uh, to to their uh, monetary policy then you could see the Japanese yen actually you know start to weaken even more because again that's the central bank's intention is for you know them to weaken the Japanese yen so there is a shorting opportunity this week but um I'm gonna move this supply zone probably up to the highs around here just so that I can fit in this demand zone. It doesn't look too cluttered. So a bit of supply here. You could look for any kind of short trades if you think the Japanese yen um, is a bargain at this price. And if you think the euro is gonna be a bargain, you're looking for a pullback into this demand zone before looking at getting long. But again, remember that there are some central bank announcements this week. Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar has rallied um, quite a bit. Got a bit of demand there. Uh, so what you're looking at is, if you're looking to get short, I deal with the shorts and buy the US dollar at the moment, what you're looking for is, a, is basically a move down, um, you know, move up, move down, and then a move back up into some sort of supply zone yeah and that would be supply before looking at short trades if you are looking at a long trade what you're looking at is you can even wait for a pullback into this area here but just be aware that you are buying at potential highs at the moment you want more, more of a deeper pullback or if you don't get that then what you're looking for is for price to continue going higher and then a pullback into that demand zone yeah so uh, that's pretty much your options for the Aussie US dollar and finally the Aussie yen Aussie yen um, again you've got let's see what we have here we've got some hidden demand right here right there 
and let's see what we've got here okay so yeah um, what you're looking for is probably just a pullback into this area here before looking at getting long if you are looking at getting short you'd look for basically a pullback into this zone and then a move back up into what would be considered supply you know right here again bear in mind that the yen strengthens in a risk off environment and the australian dollar will strengthen in a risk um on environment so yen is off australian dollar is on um and uh you know as long as uh, there's uh, uh, investors are looking at um making a return meaning that you know the the China trade wars um, are, uh, you know, subsiding. Then the Australian dollar should do well, and this is pretty much what we've seen, you know, this week. So again, there might be some short opportunities into one of these uh, also supply zones. Again, just depending on whether you want to be buying the Japanese yen. So that's it for this week. Um, I really hope that you all have a great trading week um, and I will get back to all of your comments um, ASAP. Guys, take care and speak to you soon.